Welcome to the U World Order Showcase Podcast. Your host, Jill Hart, the coach's alchemist. Couldn't be more excited to have you join us today. On this podcast, we celebrate the champions of change, the up and coming life, health and transformational coaches who are fearlessly stepping forward to make a difference in the world. Get ready for inspiring stories, practical tips, and powerful moments that will motivate you to make a positive change in your life and those around you. We're happy to have you join us on this incredible journey as we dive into the world of life, health, and transformational coaches who are lighting up the path towards a better tomorrow. Hi, and welcome to the U World Order Showcase podcast. Today, we are speaking with Allison Cotton. Allison is a soul connector who teaches women's, women in business to harness their intuition for wealth. I'm all about that. So welcome to the show, Allison. It's so good to have you here. Thank you, Jill. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to have this conversation today. Really I am really excited too you were talking a little bit about human design so let's let's first give you the opportunity to tell us how you got into all of this and then we'll we'll look at that and you've got all right. so much going on I'm so excited <laughs> <laughs> all right I'll start from the beginning so back in 2012 my marriage broke down and I was suddenly becoming a single mom with two small children and went holy crap what am I going to do how am I going to manage this you know single income etc cetera, etc cetera. So I had a mini panic attack. Then the universe said, chill, we got you. <laughs> We've got you. <laughs> and I found human design at that time too. And as we were talking earlier, I looked at my human design and went, oh, no, this is a bit too much now. I'll put it aside. And didn't come back to it for about 12 months. I think I just needed to settle in to the single mum life with the two kids and get organised that way. I then jumped it back on the human design bandwagon and went, oh, this resonates a lot. This sounds like me. This sounds like my children. Holy crackers. And so I just started experimenting. And that's the beautiful thing about human design. It's an experiment. With all the complexity that it has, this to me was something that I could play with. It was tangible because it gave me information that I went, oh, yeah, that makes sense to me. And I moved with that energy. And I'm naturally intuitive, so I kind of just went with the flow. 11 years later, 2023, I'm teaching women in business to harness their intuition and create more wealth in their business by using that as a tool to help them quantum leap. You know, it's, that, it's powerful. How does that work, the, the quantum leaping? I, I'm so uninformed when it comes to human design I know I've had people on who've talked about it before but it just like I know there's different categories and I kind of know so there's five types yes okay. so out of those five types you are either a generator manifesting generator projector reflector or manifester now there's components of that make up the part the portion of you know the eight billion people that we have in the world so for the most of it 70 percent of the population are generators or manifesting generators that's mm -hmm. me included i'm a generator around 20 percent of the population um, are projectors about nine percent are manifestors and then you have the reflectors which are only one percent which i think is increasing as we start to sort of become more 5D, spiritually minded, more awake in the world as such, because I think the stats now are about one in 100 will be a reflector. So it's kind of a little bit more than that 1%. So things are shifting when it comes to, you know, new babies being born and it's not so many generators anymore. There's more this or more that. So it's really interesting to see that shift. Really interesting. I wonder if it, it has something to do with, the more consciousness aware people are, the more absolutely 
but there's there. more there's there's a bigger plan right the universe is coming to you know cycles we we we're, we're cyclic people right the world is coming to a cyclic ending you know um by human design in 2027 we're going to be moving out of you know this particular thing and into this particular thing and it's just it's not it's not going to be like an overnight thing where suddenly we're just going to wake up tomorrow and it's all going to be this thing now it's like the age of aquarius when we moved into into that you know it happened in december but we're kind of still flowing through it still learning the ropes and understanding how this works you know it it'll be the same for that that quantum leap that's happening in in 2027 with the human design you know um we move into the the sleeping phoenix which is a completely different way of being and as you said earlier like the world is awakening we're becoming more conscious every single day i think um i also heard that there's about 1 million people per day waking up to spirituality like becoming awake like having their spiritual awakening and it's crazy you know it is and the the number of people leaving religion is like oh insane. yeah it's Great. like they it's like the like the scales fell off their eyes and they're just like oh crap i don't have to stay in this little box where i'm controlled i can That's i can right. be and, this being i was created to be and the powerful thing is that of that right because i grew up in a religious household where we all went to church on sundays etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. but i can still have i still take on a religion of some sort but it's not one particular divinity divinity or, or you know it's not just catholic it's not just anglican whatever it may be i believe that there is a higher power there is a, a spiritual yeah. being out there that is looking after me Right. If you want to put the word God to it, then you put the word God to it. I don't. I put the word universe, I put the word source. I put myself higher self. It's my own religion of some sort. Mm-hmm. So, I, I put that more in the awakening category, though. <laughs> it's <just> like <laughs> the the possibilities are are endless. You're not tied to one set of dogma and in no. tying yourself to one side of dogma i found that everybody's tied to a different dogma they don't yes. they don't even actually realize it but nobody has the same nobody believes exactly the same even if they think they do it, even it, if it was in the box they still don't believe the same thing because everyone has a different perception mm-hmm. just like little holes in the box or the, the little little containers inside the box and they're Containers, but they're all still in the box yeah 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 <laughs> yeah so tell me about this um this new new thing that's coming the new the the new paradigm the, the new the well i think we're already going through it right mm-hmm. it's been taught it's been spoken about i mean people use the words new earth people use the words 5d it's just an evolutionary process that we're going through to make it a tangible aspect. We make it sound like it's a new earth. We make it sound like it's a 5d. Right. Um, But it is just so many people waking up to their own power, realizing that the world is not a box that we can be put into. And we are just evolving, you know, and it, To me, the word 5D, the word, you know, new earth is really just a better place to live. You know, a more congruent, harmonious earth that we are shifting into. And it might not feel like that right now. I'm sure I'm sure the listeners here are going, are you kidding me? Like everything's crazy. Have you seen this? Have you seen that? But I truly believe that if we harness our own intuition our own inner guidance from source from god wherever it comes from and we are authentic in our expression of that then you know um harmony will come you know and that's where we're moving into right it's an evolutionary process that we're going into and we all create our own realities no matter what 
our mm. thoughts are our reality, whether we like them or not. <laughs> yeah, so you may as well, you know, Might think of well better things. Good of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, and and it's quite funny because I mean I have three dogs here, and one of my dogs is called Ubuntu, and he gave me that name. And we'll we'll go into a little bit of an esoteric moment here. But when we first got him, he was a native Australian animal, mm-hmm. and he was given to us by the graces of God, by the graces of the universe. Um, And he told me his name was Ubuntu. And when I looked it up, I found that it was, as it was African, it was an African philosophy. And it states that Ubuntu is means I am because you are meaning that we are all connected in this world through spirit. And that I am who I am because of you and because of you and because of everyone that we are. So I kind of get that reminder hit at me every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do too. I, and yeah. I love that though, because if we're all connected and we are, and then we're all mm. responsible for each other. There's not right. like one is better than the other we don't have to compete for things because there's plenty to go around and each of us is unique how can you compete with somebody who's different from you it's like an apple saying i want to be an orange well you're an apple and you have beautiful qualities for being an apple why would you want to be an orange can't you just appreciate the orange for being the orange how many times as a teenager did you want curly hair because you had straight hair or you wanted straight hair because you had curly hair yeah but we don't have to be like that anymore we can just appreciate Mm -hmm. the fact that we either have straight hair and if somebody does have curly hair you can admire that feature on them yes and recognize that you know it's a challenge for them too yeah it everything comes with its own package of you know blessings and challenges Mm -hmm. (laughs) there's not like the perfect thing yeah And I think, too, if we can go into a more accepting state of being, Mm -hmm. um, things will shift quite quickly. And people being more curious than dogmatic about what they want and what they, how they believe things are. If somebody comes to you and says something that you are like, you absolutely don't agree with, but you don't really understand either. If you can just reserve judgment and just be curious about it and, mm-hmm. and, and rest with the idea that you don't actually have to form an opinion about it. It can just be, it can just That's be right. whatever it is, whatever they said, you know, it doesn't have That's, to be yes. your reality, but That's you right. can respect theirs. So yes, I feel that's coming more. It is very much. There's a lot of that within the global global collectiveness right now. Like, you know, you see all these people that are expressing themselves and their authenticity and we have so much judgment on it. Yeah, but you don't have to have judgment. Judgment, when you judge somebody else, it, it puts all the onus on you. Uh, the only yeah. person that really is harmed by judging someone else is yourself. That's because right, it's the other person you want to see. yeah 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 it, the other person is like they're doing whatever they're doing it, it's, it's none of your business really <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like it look that's, away <laughs> that's right yeah you have free will to to do whatever you're going to do for yourself so i, I know you have this higher guidance meditation and i want to talk to you a little bit about this i did get it and i told you earlier i'm it's on my agenda for tonight (laughs) before i go to sleep (laughs) she's looking forward to it (laughs) i am really looking forward to it um tell me about it tell me how you how you decided to do it and and how it connects with what you're doing and what i'm gonna walk away with i have (laughs) I got this, I channeled this meditation because I believe that every woman should be wildly successful in whatever they choose to do. And if you can connect and harness your intuition, which is part of that 
meditation is connecting to your higher self, making a relationship with her or him in whatever capacity that is for you that will make you trust, that will make you believe that it's totally possible for you. And so the meditation is just really guiding you to that relationship with yourself once again, connecting like in that. with your higher self. I like that. I, and it is so true that if if you can't love yourself and understand who you are, mm. just like nobody else is going to, nobody else is going to get it. You're just going to repel people because if you don't love yourself, why should they love you? <laughs> That's a big part of it, isn't it? And you know, this whole um, uh, self-love, putting yourself first, it used to be called mm -hmm. being selfish. But I, I think people need to be selfish because the more selfish you are and the more you try to understand who you are and you have you know, healthy boundaries in your life, the more you can contribute to the community at a, at, as a whole, because you yourself are in alignment with who you're supposed to be. And you can present, you can present yourself in the way that you're supposed to be presented versus yeah. trying to fit in and pretend that you're something else. It's like, you know, the apple trying to pretend that they're the orange, even though they're clearly an apple. And so they're trying to like be attractive to people that like oranges, but they're not an orange. So they're, mm. you know. That's exactly right. And we all have our own core frequency. And I suppose this meditation is to really connect to that core frequency. Like who, who am I? Mm -hmm. on that level and how can I express myself because our human experience is a physical and an emotional one right we come in with a soul human design shows us and I, I thoroughly I, I firmly believe that in human design there's two aspects to us we have a subconscious and a conscious which is shown on your blueprint that subconscious energy arrives in your body, in your physical body, in your mother's womb, 88 days before you were born. So 88 days before you were physically born, as per human design, you, your soul enters a physical body for an experience. You've chosen that soul. You've chosen that experience. And then everything from there, we have to remember our soul. We have to remember the purpose that we're here for. Right? And so uncovering that is just a beautiful expression of who we are and everyone goes through trauma no one gets through 100%. childhood without experience and trauma because trauma is what we have chosen in order to be the crucible that allows us to emerge being the the human that we're supposed to be that we're here to be and if you can and get the thing past is they're lessons. The stuck. <laughs> yeah. And the trauma are lessons too. Like our soul came here for a reason. Like why did our soul choose now? There is a reason why our soul chose now into this 2023. Mm -hmm. Right? Our soul chose a reason to come here. What is that reason? When you connect to your source, when you connect to your higher self, you find that reason. It's called your soul purpose. Mm -hmm. That's why you're here doing this beautiful podcast. Yeah, it is. It's like one of those things that I, it it finally connected and clicked with me that this was what I needed to do. Yeah. In order to. It, for sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Allison had to get up for a second. <laughs> I'm My dog here. was tapping at the door completely matching at it. <laughs> oh, now I have the second I one have... who wants to come in. This is the joys of living at home. Come on, mister. And working at home <laughs> and having dogs. I have dogs and cats too. And <laughs> my my puppy, when he was really little, I would have him in here because I couldn't, I didn't dare leave him outside of my office unattended. And he would, he would start barking randomly. <laughs> 
doing these podcast interviews. So there are a variety of interviews earlier on that um, have a lot of little dog barking in it. <laughs> I, look, I go live every single week and, you know, at the most untimely times, the dogs decide that even though there is no one here, they have decided that there is someone here and they're going to tell the world about it. So I know all about that too. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. but people it, are so know, great it's and accepting. It's fantastic. I love I love the Zoom and I love the working from home. And I've worked from home for God, maybe 25 years now, 26 years. And wow. And I've raised little kids. And the thing that I love is that kids are part of life. And mm -hmm. for the longest time, we just wanted to shove them into daycare and pretend like eventually they were going to be adults and they we could put them in business and they could work. But really, you know, you have kids, they're supposed to be part of your life. I, I homeschooled the last three of my five and it was just so great to be able to interact with them throughout the day and and establish a connection with them and a rhythm and if they came in while I was working they came in while I was working they were just going to be on the computer or they were going to be heard on the on yeah. the phone call it's okay and I I like that I, I've yeah. had guests who who've had their kids have have shown up and they're like I'm so sorry and I'm like hey, you know it's life it's and it's great God. yeah yeah exactly Exactly. Like, I don't know how many times my kids have stuck a hand in and just, you know, a little wave. <laughs> it's like, show your face. Nope. <laughs> we need to normalize that. We need to mm. normalize, you know, business and entrepreneurship is part of your life. It is not. Absolutely. It's not separate. Not and separate. This is where the relationship comes in. Right. Your business has its own relationship energy to you. Mm -hmm. Your higher self has its own relationship energy to you. Your physical human experience has its own relationship to your body. Right? Because your emotions may react differently to my emotions. Hmm. That's you know, really we're not interesting. All one size. Yeah. And we're not all one size. Like you might be a size 10, I might be a size 12. Like we're not all identical. And we're not supposed to be. <laughs> Mm -mm. it goes back to that, that that whole competition thing i i'm really i'm all about cooperation I'm, I'm coining a new word you want to say and i haven't heard that one before it's cooperation it's where where everybody comes together they're being their best self like I'm going to be my best apple and you're going to be your best orange and i can appreciate your orangeness and you can appreciate me being an apple, but I don't have to be an orange and you don't have yeah. to be an apple, but together we make a great fruit bowl. <laughs> oh yeah. And that reminds me of human design with those five types we mentioned earlier. All of us, we might be segmented into a type per se, mm -hmm. but we each have a unique gift that we bring to the table to make the fruit bowl, the fruit platter, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even though there's the five types, there's, there's nuances in all of those types oh, that are like yeah. mind-boggling to, to me. But... <laughs> well, yes, as part of that, there's 64 gates that um, sequence around our human design. Now, we only capture 32 of those. So we only capture half of those, right? And not everyone has the same capture. Not everyone has the same photograph, like the same blueprint. Right, there will be commonalities where we all might have the same gate on the same, you know, in the same planet. For example, our sun sign. Most people who were born on a certain day will all have the same sun sign, but every other Earth, Moon, planet will be different. Yeah, because it does relate to astrology, and astrology is like it does. Yeah, it depends on when you were born, what time you were born, and where you were born, what the sky was doing, and where things were planets were in relation to um stars and it's mm. you know a difference of two hours two people born at the right. exact same spot on the exact same yeah. day they're different and mm -hmm. their astrological um 
descriptions are all different. It, it's that's right. Yeah, and so we really might amazing. be all areas, or we might be all Scorpios, you know, because we've born we're born in a certain time period, mm-hmm. but the reflection of that is completely different through experience, through emotion, through our awareness and our actions. So I, I wonder if we don't even pick the exact moment that we're supposed to be born. I don't think we do. Do you? Did your children come on time? Did they come to the exact date that the doctor gave you? No, but it's interesting that if if all of these things explain stuff to you, and if we decide beforehand that this is the experience we want to have I wonder if that isn't a possibility maybe I and no my children all came when they decided it was time to go (laughs) well that's right and I, I mean yeah it's the universe is just always in flux it's always in motion there's always moving there's always something happening mm-hmm it's the energy because energy is what holds it all together and it it flows through everything yeah and i don't think any woman who hasn't predetermined their their surgery for a baby you know your baby comes when your baby comes sunday night at seven o'clock or 2 a.m on friday morning well even if you prearranged your surgery and had a c-section i I'm not so sure that the universe couldn't just have Oh, the universe can change that on on a whim. Like suddenly you're not having pre-surgery, you're having the baby now. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah. But I I think the universe has has a grand plan and that each piece fits in exactly as it's supposed to. Each person goes through life exactly as they're supposed to. Mm Mm-hmm. And we do have what you might call free will, but I think a lot of that is just the the journey. It's the story unfolding for you. It's the lessons you're learning and what you're doing with the lessons. And yeah. And it I don't believe that it ends when you pass. You're just passing and then you're gonna have a different experience. Yes, that's exactly right. So interesting. You, yeah, I I I love this stuff so much. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you work with people? Is it one on one? Is it group? Is it self? I have tried many things over the years. <laughs> and my intuition really, really guides me on how I work with people. Mm-hmm. So three years ago it was in person and then COVID hit, so we couldn't really do that. Then I went online and I started doing one-on-ones and I tried the group thing, but the group thing sort of never took off, even though my intuition was kind of like, just give it a whirl and it didn't take off. So I stuck to the one-on-ones. Now in 2023, well, well, since the beginning of 2023, I've done group programs. I've done that four times and that was highly successful. And I was still getting one-on-one clients, but there were less. So instead of having, you know, 15 in a month, I would have maybe five, but that was also covered by the 10 that were inside my program. So essentially there was still 15, but just working in a different fashion. So I really follow my intuition and my guidance of when and where and what that looks like. I love that. I love that. And so how do people join your, your offers? You can join my email list like you did by selecting your higher self meditation. I also have a chakra balance. I do offer um, mini 15 minute hot seats that will basically give you a brief overview of your human design and, you know, where a point at where we can start working together with, because there's a different point for everybody. It might not be where I think it needs to be. And once I, I work intuitively and I channel, I mean, I truly believe that we channel all the time. Even when we're speaking now, we're channeling because you don't know what you're going to say next until someone prompts you. Um, And unless you're actively 
pausing and thinking of the thought that you want to say, you're literally just channeling. Really interesting. I never thought of it that way. I have to, I have to ponder that. Ponder that one. Ponder that one. Well, we are, like I said earlier, we have a core frequency and that core frequency is like a radio. It tunes in to all the different things. Mm hmm Right? And if you're listening, if you're really, really listening, if you're pausing, if you're slowing down, you will hear what it's telling you. Fascinating. So how can people get in touch with you? You're welcome to contact me on Facebook, on Instagram, via my email. Um, they're the major places that I hang out. I also hang out on TikTok now. There's that seems to be the groovy thing to do. <laughs> and I love TikTok. I really do. But I haven't, I haven't intuitive, like I'm getting that nudge to, to go down that route, mm -hmm. but I haven't quite taken all of that in yet. It's kind of like, how does that look like? What does that look like? Yeah. And each platform has its own nuances and, mm -hmm. and different yeah. things that, they want from you that's right but my main platform is facebook i go live every single week there on my facebook page um i actually go live every week and we follow the solar transit of the human design mandala so for 365 days out of those 64 gates they transit through the sun's energy so the masculine energy the moon is the feminine so when we follow the moon and the sun flow happens quite significantly quite quickly because we know by human design what gate we're going through this week and you can navigate it so as an example this week as we're having this conversation on in december is um we're going through gate five which is the gate of consistency so if you can wrangle the gate of consistency this week how can i look at becoming more consistent and creating better habits for myself right we're just about to lead into a new year that's kind of the planning phase as a business owner is like, how can I be more consistent in 2024? Well, this is that perfect week to have a look at that energy. It's flowing to us already. It's within us. It's like the moon when we do it in Scorpio. We all know that it's going to be this type of moon and this type of flow. The sun can do the exact same thing for us on a weekly basis. It's I, really interesting how that, how that actually shows up in your life because there's times when I've done projects and mm -hmm. it's like, I just, it was so hard. And other times I'm doing the same project and it's like, this is so easy. easy. I, I it think it's just really, the really energy. interesting to know what your human design is and then using, like harnessing that, as part of your business and your energy flow. Like for me, I know that I'm a generator. So that mm -hmm. means that I have boundless and boundless amounts of energy when I'm doing the right things. If I'm doing all the wrong things, I'm going to burn out pretty quick. I think I'm a manifesting generator. I think that's what we decided when I had the little thing done, but I don't have any idea about the gates. It was but that's okay. That can as be got. just enough to know, right? As I said earlier with the five types, if you know your type, you know how automatically your energy is flowing to the universe. So 70% of generators and manifesting generators are energizer bunnies. They're very much working bees of the community, right? But we are also, the other types are influenced by that energy. Because we're such working bees, and I was doing this with my son, like getting him up to go to school. He's not a 5 a.m. like I am. Trying to get him out of bed was just like a killer. But once I understood how he managed his type, like how he how he energetically operated, it was like, right, I can get my son into an easier routine where he will get up in the morning, especially when he was young. You know, at the age of seven, no kid wants to get up for school. Yeah, no. <laughs> but if I could put him to bed early enough because knowing that he needed more rest than I did, 
if I could manage his sleep wake times, then his energy levels would be higher. His chance of waking up at 7 a.m. for the school bus would be higher and things would be easier. Yeah, that was one of the things with homeschooling that I really appreciated was that I didn't have to wake kids up. And I really think that young kids should just be able to sleep until they're done sleeping. And they should be able to establish the circadian rhythm that they were born with. Because mm-hmm. we all yeah. have a rhythm that's, that's right. that feels good for us. Like I can wake up at five o'clock in the morning and I just wake up. It's mm-hmm. like, I'm awake. I'm ready to go. I've, I've got things to do and I'm excited for the day and I feel good. But I know my husband man, if you wake him up before eight o'clock in the morning and we both go to bed at the same time, <laughs> That's he's my husband just like too. <laughs> dragging all day. <laughs> <laughs> That's my husband too. Don't worry. We're in the same boat. I, feel you. <laughs> I, I kind yes. of like the morning hours though. Sometimes he threatens to wake up early and I'm like, no, no, Please it's don't. all good. <laughs> <laughs> I want those hours to myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the joy of being the 5 a.m. or is that none of the world is awake yet you can do what you bloody please mm-hmm. and, and yeah I love it it's still dark out and, and all the stuff <laughs> winters so, can get hard though <laughs> yeah this has been an absolute pleasure chatting with you Allison is there one thing that you want to leave the audience with today that you hope they take away from our conversation I want you to believe in yourself. Believe that this is possible for you. Believing that the universe always has your back and that your intuition is on point because that's the biggest hang-up with women in business. They don't trust their intuition enough to follow the guidance, especially when it comes to their business because they're stuck in that money brain. I need money to get clients, I need clients to get money, I need clients, I need money, I need clients, I need money. And, you know, if they would just stop and listen to their intuition for five minutes, it will be surprising where it takes them. So trust yourself. Trust yourself. We'll leave it with that. Thank you so much for joining me today, Allison. Thank you for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for tuning in to another empowering episode of the You World Order Showcase podcast. We hope you've enjoyed hearing from our incredible life, health, and transformational coaches who are making a profound impact on the world. Remember, change begins with you, and you have the power to transform your life and the lives of others. If you want to take that next step and unlock your true potential, visit thecoachesalchemist.com where you can find the three ways we can help you for free to spin your talent into gold with clarity, a system, and a plan. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an inspiring episode. And if you enjoyed today's show, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback means the world to us and helps us reach more people with our positive message. Stay connected with us on social media for updates, behind-the-scenes content, and upcoming guest announcements. You can find us on Facebook at The You World Order or simply visit thecoachesalchemist.com.